Hi everyone, this is Arun and welcome back to the channel. I hope you and your loved ones are staying safe and healthy. Today I'm starting a new series on OTBI and OTBI stands for Oracle Transactional Business Intelligence. I'm hoping this will help anyone who is new to Oracle Cloud and wants to learn the basics of OTBI. I want to show you what is possible and how easy it is to get started. There are four main reporting tools in Oracle Cloud. Those are BI Publisher, OTBI, Smart View, and FRS. FRS stands for Financial Reporting Studio. And in this video and this series, we will focus mainly on OTBI. OTBI has a pre-built or out-of-the-box subject areas provided by Oracle. From Oracle's documentation, Subject areas are a grouping of information pieces called data objects that relate to each other in a particular context. In simple words, if you want to create an analysis for a business area, like AP invoices for example, the subject area will have all the information that you need to create the analysis, or at least that's the assumption. One thing to keep in mind uh, about ODBI is that it is to be used for analysis or to answer a business question or questions. It is not recommended for high volume reporting like BI Publisher, and that is one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen consultants make. If you need high volume reporting, consider using BI Publisher. One of the cool things about OTBI is the ease at which you can create an analysis, um, as you will see in this video. Multiple analysis can be combined to create a dashboard and an infolet in Oracle ERP Cloud is also based on OTBI analysis. So here's my friend Dave. He's also trying to learn OTBI. If you want to learn more about subject areas for each functional area, Oracle has great documentation. I have provided links to the financials and HCM subject areas. Feel free to check out the documentation and learn more about the subject areas available for various modules. You can find documentation for SCM, projects, etc. Okay, Dave is now getting impatient. Uh, to answer his question, there are two ways to create an OTBI analysis, BI Composer and BI Analysis Editor. In this video, we will work with BI Composer. Um, you will use BI Composer to create simple analysis. You can have sorting, prompts, filters, column highlighting, etc. BI Analysis Editor is used to create much more complex analysis and using BI analysis editor you can develop an analysis to have drill down and drill through capabilities as well. Drill down is to go from a summary analysis to a detailed analysis and drill through is to navigate from an analysis to the application page itself. All right, enough of talk. Dave wants to experiment. So let's go ahead and create a simple analysis we are going to create an analysis uh, which, we, which is going to be in a tabular format. Uh, we want to analyze the payables invoice details. And the columns that we are interested in are invoice number, description, date, supplier name, invoice amount, and invoice amount paid. As you can see, I have uh, logged into the application. Now click on the hamburger menu or navigator icon on the top left hand corner of the page. Navigate to Tools and select Reports and Analytics. Once you're on the Reports and Analytics page, um, click on the Create button. You'll see two options, Report and Analysis. If you select Report, a new BI catalog window will open where uh, you can create analysis using BI Analysis Editor. You can also check out other artifacts like BI Publisher Reports, OTBI Analysis, Dashboards, etc. Since we are working with BI Composer, let's select the Analysis option. So click the Create button and then select Analysis option. Here you can see the list of subject areas. You can either scroll down and select the subject area, or if you know the name or at least part of it, you can search for it and then select the subject area. I'm going to search for the term Payables. You will see a list of subject areas. Now, how do we know which subject area to select? When you're first starting out, Oracle's documentation will be a great help. 
Let's check Oracle documentation to find out which subject area has the information we need. Let's check the payable subject areas. I see a subject area called payables, invoices, transactions, real time. Um, and if you read the description, it says real time information on payable invoices, such as invoice number, supplier, site, business unit, invoice amount, currency, paid amount, etc. To me, this seems like the subject area we need to use. So back in the application, let's select this subject area. Expand the subject area and you will see various folders. You can already see how organized the subject area is. It has various folders, subfolders, and data elements inside the folders. The naming of the folders and data elements are intuitive and user-friendly. Now let's expand invoice details folder. For our analysis, the data elements we need are in general information folder and the invoice amounts folder. Go ahead and expand general information and select invoice number, description, date, and supplier name. And from the invoice amount folder, let's select invoice amount and invoice amount paid uh, data elements. You can press, uh, press down control key and left click to select multiple fields at the same time. Once you've selected all the fields, let's click the add icon uh, or the right arrow key. You have the option to rearrange the column sequence. Now, in our case, I want the invoice number to be the first column. So highlight the invoice number uh, field and click on the move to top option. I also want to change the invoice description column header to just description. Click on the column and then um, click on column properties, uh, which is a pencil icon that you see. Go ahead and change the column header to description. Same way, I will change invoice amount paid uh, column header to amount paid, supplier or party name to supplier name. Once you're happy with the changes, uh, you can click next. In the select views page, provide a title for your analysis. It's not a mandatory field, but it's useful to have. I'm going to give it a title called Invoice Details. Expand the table dropdown and select the recommended tabular format. Also select the preview option. Awesome. With a few clicks, you can see the data. Now let's make a few more changes. So click next and get to the next section. In this page, you have the option to create prompts group data by sections or exclude fields from the analysis. We are going to keep it simple in the first video or like other programming language tutorials, consider this as a hello world example for OTBI. So let's not worry about these for now. Click next. In the sort and filter page, let's go ahead and sort by invoice state in the descending order. Now you have the option to use multiple fields for sorting. If you want to sort by invoice date and then sort by supplier name, that is possible. But we'll just uh, keep it to one field. So once you have done that, click next to go to the next section. All right, let's go ahead and perform some column highlighting based on certain conditions. So any invoices with invoice amount between $2,500 and $50,000 are to be highlighted in yellow. Any invoice with invoice amount greater than $50,000 to be highlighted in red. Let's enter those numbers. You'll see that the invoices with amount less than 2,500 are highlighted in red and any invoices with amount greater than 50,000 is highlighted in green. And that is not what we wanted. All right, to fix this, I'm going to change the green color in the first section and select white instead of uh, green and change the green color in the third section uh, to red. Now this means our criteria. You can see the colors changed and the highlighting is displayed properly. All right, let's click next and then um, in this page we have to give the analysis a name and a description. 
um, select the folder you want to save the analysis in. You can save it in my folders or shell folders. If you save it in my folders, only you can edit or view the analysis. However, if you would like to share the analysis with others, you have to store it in shared folders. I'm going to select shared folders, custom and A1 analysis folder, and then click submit. You see a confirmation that the analysis has been saved. Click OK. And oh no, you've created the analysis, you saved it, but where is my analysis? OK, don't worry. Uh, we're on the reports analysis homepage. So uh, we can go and find the analysis using a trick. Let's go and clear the filter. Now you should be able to see the folders, right? Let's navigate to shared folders custom A1 analysis folder. Now you see the uh, various analysis that we have created in this folder. You can click on the analysis to view the analysis. Uh, but before we do that, let's make the analysis as my favorite. So when I come back to the page, I can see it. Uh, if you click the three dots over to the right, you'll see options to view and edit. And there's another option called more, but view will, you know, you can view the analysis, edit, and it'll take you to the editor and you can make changes to the analysis and save it. For now, let's view our analysis and we will look at editing the analysis in the next video. All right. You should be proud of the results with a few clicks and no coding. We were able to create an analysis. Um, you have the option to print or export the analysis. All right. I think that's good enough for this video. I just wanted to give you a taste of what you can do with OTBI and how easy it is. If you have questions or comments, let me know. The link to the PPD is available in the video description. All right, everyone, I'll talk to you in the next video. Stay safe, stay healthy.